Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night, in which our Lord Jesus passed over from death to life, the Church invites her members, dispersed throughout the world, to gather in vigil and prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord, in which, by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we share in his victory over death. Let us pray. O God, through your Son, you have bestowed upon your people the brightness of your light. Sanctify this new fire and grant that in this Paschal feast we may so burn with heavenly desires that with pure minds we may attain to the festival of everlasting light. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. Rejoice now, heavenly hosts and choirs of angels, and let your trumpets shout salvation for the victory of our mighty King. Rejoice and sing now all the round earth, Bright with a glorious splendor, for darkness has been vanquished by our eternal King. Rejoice and be glad now, Mother Church, and let your holy courts in radiant light resound with the praises of your people. All you who stand near this marvelous and holy flame, pray with me, to God the Almighty, for the grace to sing the worthy praise of this great light. Through Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
It is truly right and good, always and everywhere, with our whole heart and mind and voice to praise you, the invisible, almighty and eternal God and your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who at the feast of the Passover paid for us the debt of Adam's sin and by his blood delivered your faithful people. This is the night when you brought our fathers, the children of Israel, out of the bondage in Egypt and led them through the Red Sea on dry land. This is the night when all who believe in Christ are delivered from the gloom of sin and are restored to grace and holiness of life. This is the night when Christ broke the bonds of death and hell and rose victorious from the grave. How wonderful and beyond our knowing, O God, is your mercy and loving kindness to us, that to redeem a slave you gave a son. How holy is this night when wickedness is put to flight and sin is washed away. It restores innocence to the fallen and joy to those who mourn. It casts out pride and hatred and brings peace and concord. How blessed is this night when earth and heaven are joined and man is reconciled to God. Holy Father, accept our evening sacrifice the offering of this candle in your honor. May it shine continually to drive away all darkness. May Christ, the morning star who knows no setting, Find it ever burning. He who gives his light to all creation and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
The reading is from Exodus. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there was no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you to do to us? What would you have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians will see today, you shall see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you will only be kept still. You, you have only to keep, be keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the, dark, the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the earth of the Egyptians so that they will go so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself and for Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I, gain, when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of God who was going before the Israelites' army moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all, other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, and the waters forming a wall for them on their right and left side. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of the Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning which watched, the Lord in the pillar of fire cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged the chariot wheels so that they turned with great difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your right hand, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had fallen them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall them on their right and on their left. Thus says, thus the Lord saved Israel from the, the day of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel, now, Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord. For he has triumphed gloriously, horse and rider, he has thrown into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Let us pray. O God, whose wonderful deeds of old shine forth even to our own day, you once delivered by the power of your mighty arm your people from slavery under Pharaoh to be a sign for us of the salvation of all nations by the waters of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. We I present Zachary Spirit Loban to, to receive the sacrament of, of baptism. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the grace and power of God? I will, I will with God's God. help. We will with God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? I we will, will with, with God's, God's help. help. We will with God's help. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. We renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce, I renounce them. them. We renounce them. 
Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce, I renounce them. them. We renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. I do. We do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. I do. We do. We do. And now will all of you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this person in his life in Christ? We will. We will. Let, let us now join with Zachary, who is committing himself to Christ, and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? <clears throat> I believe in God the Father Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of Christ. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will. I will, with God's help. will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will. With God's help. Will you proclaim? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God and Christ? I will. I will with God's help. I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, I will, with, God's I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, I will with God's help. help. I will. Let us now pray for this person who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver him, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Open his heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill him with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach him to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Send him into the world in witness to your love. <clears throat> Lord, hear our prayer. Bring him to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water.
Over it, your Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are here cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. 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 Zachary Spirit, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised him to the new life of grace. Sustain him, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give him an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. Just one more second, old guy. Zachary, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you in the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Friends, our Lenten journey for this year is now ended. Let us with great joy celebrate the Paschal Feast. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Lord, Lord, Lord is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who made this most holy night to shine with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church that spirit of adoption which is given to us in baptism, that we, being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Reading is from Romans. Do you not know that all of us have been baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with, with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we, lived, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once and for all. For the, all, for the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to Glory you, to you Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint the body of Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. <clears throat> and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Period. The end. I guess St. Mark knew how to write a cliffhanger before cliffhangers were cool. The resurrection story we just read out of the Gospel of Mark is utterly unique in the Bible. The three other Gospels, Matthew, Luke, and John, all give us more. They each offer several different accounts of Jesus' appearances after his resurrection. But Mark does not. Mark ends on a cliffhanger. They, the women who came to the empty tomb, that is, said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. And for a moment, such as the one in which we find ourselves right now, perhaps this is incredibly good news. Mark doesn't try to give us any details. We don't know what comes next. Mark tells us one and only one thing. That when all is said and done, when Jesus has been betrayed, handed over to the brutal imperial authorities, crucified and killed, we can know exactly one thing for certain. He is very much not dead. That's it. We don't know anything else. We don't know where he goes next or what he does next. But we know with utter certainty that in spite of the forces of destruction having done everything they could to squash him, he is very much not dead. This may be exactly the good news we need for a year such as this. Chances are that if you took any of us from, say, January of 2020, and tried to explain the events that would take place between then and now, we would shake our heads in disbelief. Surely the entire world couldn't shut down to the extent it has for an entire year. 
Surely tensions across political and racial lines couldn't erupt into such widespread violence. Surely our beloved congregation couldn't abruptly lose four of its loved and longtime members. I'm sure I could go on much longer with a list like this. This has been a year that has called into question the stability and even survival of so many things that we probably imagined we could count on. And the future is still very uncertain. As society and church begin to reemerge from what is probably the most extensive period of lockdown in our memories, it is entirely unclear how things will look going forward. Which institutions and practices will have survived the past year? And which ones are gone for good? And what new ones will arise that never existed before? But underneath all of these questions and all of this uncertainty, Mark's Easter message places one bedrock truth. After all of the death of the pandemic and our response to it, after all of the death of fractured relationships in our nation and our world, after the deaths of beloved friends and family, the end of it all is not death. This is the promise of Easter. Nowhere are we promised that we will not face trials and tribulations, in some cases even apparent destruction. But we are promised through the resurrection miracle that when all is said and done, life and not death will be the final state. All else may be a mystery, but the one thing we can rest assured of is that life, an eternal and indestructible sort of life, is what we are headed for. I can't think of a more encouraging message for the moment of uncertainty in which we find ourselves as we emerge from what has probably been one of the most disorienting and disconcerting years in our lives. Even in the state of complete unknowing in which we now find ourselves, the simple promise of Mark's gospel rings true. Destruction hasn't won in spite of Herculean attempts to do so. Grace has won. Life has won. God has and always will win. And this brings us to what happened just a couple minutes ago. <clears throat> My own son, Zachary, followed in the footsteps of billions before him in undergoing this strange ritual drowning that we call baptism. What is this all about? Why do we pour water over or immerse people, often infants, in this arcane ritual? It's because we are enacting, in a very physical way, what we hear in tonight's gospel. In all of our lives, and Zachary, this includes you, any number of things may come our way. Any number of things may try to sidetrack us, to stop us, even to destroy us. And no matter how smoothly or not smoothly our lives go, one day these mortal bodies will cease to function for us. But as we drown with Christ in the waters of baptism, we are also offered a very real pledge of what comes after. 
Zachary, I couldn't be more delighted to tell you that the ritual you've just been through demonstrates beyond the shadow of a doubt that when it's all said and done, no matter what happens, you will wind up very much not dead, very much alive. And the exciting part is that the rest is up to you. With God's help, you get to make of this life whatever amazing and miraculous thing your heart desires. At this point, it's a complete mystery. None of us, probably not even you, know as yet what's in store for you. <clears throat> but we do know one thing for certain, and that's why we brought you here tonight. Whatever these years to come do and do not contain for you, when it's all over, your tomb will be empty. The forces of destruction are powerless over you. Just like Jesus on Easter morning, whoever comes looking for you amongst the dead and defeated won't find you there because you're already past all that. And so it is with all of us. Friends, I know that this has been a very hard year for many of us. And this very moment may be no exception for you. But in whatever way you find yourself less than alive, in whatever way you find yourself discouraged, afraid, confused, defeated, God has no intention of letting you stay there. God promises to and will raise you out of whatever tombs you may inhabit. And at the end of the day, you are headed for the place of life, not death. Happy Easter. Let us pray with joy to our risen Lord, saying, Alleluia. Thank you, risen Lord. Risen Christ, we thank you for the church you have built here on earth to witness to your power and love. Thank you for the risen life you offer to all your faithful people. Today, we lift up to your blessing all people in assemblies who gather in the divine name. We remember especially the Anglican communion, including Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We remember also the Episcopal Church in this land and our diocese, including Michael, our presiding bishop, Mark, our bishop, and the Church of Resurrection in Pleasant Hill. In our local community, we remember before you Cornerstone Fellowship in Livermore. Alleluia. Thank, thank you, you, risen, risen Lord. Lord. <clears throat> risen Christ, we thank you for the foretaste you offer in your resurrection of that day when every nation and people will live in perfect peace and harmony. Thank you for giving to all peoples especially those in positions of public trust and power, a desire for that day and that will and means to help bring it about. We remember before you, Joe, our president, Gavin, our governor, Bob, our mayor, and all those who serve in legislative assemblies or judicial roles in this and every land. Thank you for your guidance and providence over every nation and its leaders. Alleluia. Thank, Thank you, you Lord. Lord. Thank you, risen Christ, for overcoming the world's troubles and fears. Thank you for keeping us focused on you and the power of your resurrection 
during this time of pandemic and all the challenges it brings. We remember before you today all those who care for others in body, mind, or spirit, especially the first responders, for all nurses, doctors, police, file firefighters, educators, and especially Brad O and Brad S. Thank you for pouring out your love and protection upon them and upon us all. Alleluia. Thank you, risen Lord. Risen Christ, thank you for gathering this congregation at St. Bartholomew's together in awe of you and affection for one another. Thank you for blessings, for the blessings you pour out upon us together and individually. We remember before you today, especially these names of our congregation. We pray for Kip, Jeff, Liz, Grace, and March, and Kathy, and those in military service, for Aaron, Joey, Abigail, Valerie, Amber, Christopher, and Taylor. Alleluia. Thank, Thank you, you, risen Lord. Thank you, risen Lord, that even exalted at God's right hand, you are still our great physician. We thank you for the healing mercies you pour out into the lives of all who struggle in body, mind, and spirit. Remember before you, especially those, these who have requested our prayers. We pray for Olivia, Becky, Brett M., Carl, Carol, Kathy, Chalopi M., Dave R., David, Dawn and Wendy, Doris, Erin, Esteban, Miroslava, and Tamara, Glenis, Geraldine, Helen, Umberto, Candida and family, Janice and Bravo, Jim and Janet, Josh, Joanne, Lisa B, Luke, Marge and family, Marie R, Mary L, Mary M, Marissa and family, Monty and Judy, Nick, Nina, Michael, Sandra and Henrietta, Sarah, Michael E, Sylvia P, Steve W and children, Tamara S, Reverend Jennifer Nelson and family, the Sweeney, Rudolph, and Plemons families, the Herman family, the Purcell family, the Moon family, the Ruzika family, the Bohr family, and the Montgomery family. And we wish healing prayers for all God's children who have gone missing. May you all be rescued and feel God's warm love for you. And of course, a very happy baptism day to Zachary. Amen. A happy 18th birthday to Cameron, 92nd birthday to Doris, as well as the birthdays of Lawrence, Reverend Ron, and our own Deacon Jennifer. Alleluia. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you, you, risen, risen Lord. Lord. Thank you, risen Lord, that in bursting forth from the tomb, you have paved the way for all the departed to enjoy eternal life. We thank you especially for these, your servants, who have entered into your nearer presence. And they are the Capitol Police Officer, Billy Evans, Boulder Police Officer, Eric Talley, Clifford Willibus, Jennifer R., Sharon H., Linda G., John M., Marie R., Fern P., Joan B., 
and Elder M. We gratefully and joyfully await the day when we will rise with you to the life immortal. Alleluia. Thank, Thank you, you risen, risen Lord. Lord. And now, O oh Christ, with grateful hearts, we offer you thanks for all the blessings, yet unspoken, that you have given us, and we bring before you with hearts and voices all of our prayer concerns. Lord God, we thank you for this yearly celebration of the Easter feast. Help us, we pray, to trust its message, to trust even if it seems at times impossibly far away, your resurrection power, knowing that no matter where we may be right now, it is life and health and true prosperity and joy that is the end to which you call us all. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, also with you. you. Friends, we are going to move now from the passing of the peace to our final benediction and a hymn and a dismissal. Uh, you would note that ordinarily this would be the point in the service where we celebrate Eucharist, but we are going to put that on hold until the outdoor service at 2 o'clock on Easter afternoon, which will take place right here at St. Bartholomew's on the parking lot. And I hope and pray that many, many of you will be able to attend and celebrate that with us joyfully. Uh, there will be options both to sit outside um, in chairs on the uh, parking lot or to remain in cars and to receive the service through the radio in that way. And those wishing to uh, celebrate uh, the first communion of Easter will have the opportunity to do that at that time. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia.